Hello everyone, you've tuned into Business Today TV and I'm Akanksha. Today we have with us a very special guest, Lara Steen. She's the founder of TEDx and currently the CEO of Boma Global. She was formerly the executive director of Women's March Global as well as of MIT React. But today we're going to talk to her about a very special project of hers, the Regen DAO. It's helping in making this world a better place for our future generations. So thank you so much, Lara. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for taking out the time. So let's just dive into the questions. What is the Regen DAO? Could you explain this to, you know, our audience, which is maybe not so familiar with the whole Web3 space and what a DAO is? Could you tell them in like very simple words what the Regen DAO is? So in very simple words, the Regen DAO is a fund with a soul. It's the first kind of platform, marketplace, and global community to radically reimagine, reconceive, and restructure how do we fund truly sustainable and regenerative projects? And it's doing this by leveraging artists, science, scientists, creative communities, entrepreneurs, and futurists to really think about how we come together to collaborate and then underlying it, how do we fund the systems and the projects that are truly regenerative? And the idea was born about a year ago when I was sitting reading Paul Hawking's book, Regeneration, and it's very much focused on what are the truly regenerative projects and how do we scale these regenerative projects? And I was looking at the challenge around how even though we have the Paris Accord and we have a lot of people right now talking about ESG and funds willing to fund certain things that are meant to be sustainable, really the money is not flowing to the types of projects that we needed to flow to. And I have a Ted Fellow and a friend who's working right now on a giant um, data project around where funding is going when it comes to sustainable and regenerative projects. And it's an amazing um, visual um, representation of how the money is flowing. And when you look at it, there is money flowing to regenerative sustainable projects, but it's moving towards high tech projects, um, things like solo uh, wind power, it's not going towards projects that are about around the future of agri or regenerative agriculture. And there's so many more categories than just the high tech um, vertical of sort of regeneration and sustainability. And those other verticals are not being funded. And so I was thinking about the liquidity at the time in the Web3 world. I was reading Paul Hawkins' book, and I was trying to figure out what to do with BOMA at the time of COP and how to really bring BOMA to COP in a way that was meaningful and ri rise above the noise that is so often associated with um, events like COP or the World Economic Forum. And I started to think a lot about how we could both get the money flowing to these new regenerative projects, but equally importantly, if we're really going to move towards this regenerative future, how do we imagine a different kind of world? And I was thinking back to the 50s and 60s and how at that moment in time, our futurists and our artists were often projecting a really utopian future and how we were going to leverage tech and um, other means to really live better in the future. And how right now a lot of our artists and our futurists are quite projecting quite a dystopian future. And how if we really are going to move towards a world where a more fair, just, sustainable and regenerative world, we need the help of our visionaries and artists to allow us to see an alternative way to live. And so I started pairing science and tech projects with amazing artists that I know on the planet with the idea that we could tap in for starters to some of the liquidity in the Web3 space and create collections and NFTs that really showed alternative ways in which the tech and science could be manifested for us to have a better life. And that's where it started. It's now evolved into a much bigger vision. We are creating an umbrella DAO that is really focused on how do we think about refi and DeFi to fund regeneration and how do we get funding moving towards the projects that are regenerative and the projects that really matter and what is the role of our artists and our visionaries to help make that happen. So it truly is a collaboration between artists, scientists, entrepreneurs, and futurists with an eye to how do we fund future regenerative projects. That sounds really wonderful, Lada. Is my audio on? 
That sounds really wonderful, Lara. Now, coming to a project, I know there's a project which is native to India as well called the Thun. Could you talk uh, about uh, more about that? You know, because our audience could relate more to that and how the region DAO is helping rebuild a barren piece of land in Rajasthan. Yes, so the region DAO right now has about 11 pods in it, and the Dun project is one of the pods. Dun is an extraordinary piece of land in Rajasthan. It's about 500 acres and growing, and it's going back to old regenerative techniques to try to figure out how to regenerate the land, as well as looking at water catch systems that were pre-colonial and reintroducing um, water tech that is ancient water tech on how do we make sure that our um, that we're conserving water. And so what we've done is we've partnered the Dune Project, which is doing all this work with a really well-known and amazing, two amazing artists. One is Ragva KK and the other is Shiloh Suleiman. And they are each working on projects around Dune where they're collaborating with Dune and then creating artistic manifestations of some of the tech and science happening and the regenerative science happening on the land and issuing a series of NFTs that represent this. And then those NFTs will be put on our marketplace and secondary marketplaces. And as they trade, 30% 30% of the money goes to the artist, 30% goes back to Dune, and 40% goes into our umbrella region DAO to fund future projects both at Dune and um, elsewhere on the planet. And so our hope... Okay, so... Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you continue, I'm sorry. And so our, um, our longer-term vision is that we create a series of these regenerative pods And we go to COP, either COP27 or COP28, and we uh, launch a series of projects as well as NFT collections every day at COP that are collaborations between these truly regenerative projects on the planet and the artists to be able to say to the world, if we really want to make this change happen, here are 30 projects that you can either invest in, you can invest in the NFTs and trade them, or you can invest and by the tokens of the DAO to fund future projects like this. So uh, have you faced any kinds of obstacles from authorities or, you know, public authorities or local authorities in India or other places where the projects of region DAO are, you know, uh, working to, you know, create a better world? And why, why did you not go through the bureaucratic way and just take it upon yourself? Like, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really huge project you know take up on yourself and to have a community of people doing that but why did you not take the way of the bureaucratic way or the help you know seek help from the government well if you look at the inertia right now on the planet when it comes to sustainability and regeneration much of it is either a function of the existing systems either the political systems or the corporations who have a certain structure and a certain governance system and change is hard in order to make change happen all the stakeholders have to be aligned and right now doing it through government and corporations is a very slow process as we've seen if you look at um, you know how very little change has happened throughout the years when it comes to things like COP which is really the intersection of government and 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 private and public. And so I'm a firm believer that in order to make change happen, we need to bring all stakeholders together. We have to do it in a different way that is more disruptive. And we also have to, most people often lack the imagination to be able to see how things could be different. And then the indention systems want to hold on to the power structure of the old systems. And so to make the change happen, sometimes you have to be a little bit more disruptive. And so this is just an example of a umbrella format that could allow these projects that are truly regenerative and the science is all there. And many of them have really done extraordinary things on the planet that if they were allowed to scale, they could create this shift but they're not getting the support they needed right now or that they need right now from the existing systems because either they are being held back by 
um, the status quo that doesn't feel that that doesn't want to let go of their power or they the money just isn't flowing in that direction because unfortunately it's slightly slower capital and when you look at the traditional investment community they often want to see a certain return in three to five years and if they're not getting that return they will even though they say they want to invest in sustainable and regeneration they're not really willing to make that compromise to allow something to happen if the return is is slower and so in order to shift that narrative i don't believe it can be done through traditional political power and political structures and I really feel we need some different way of looking at it. If you look at the Web3 ecosystem right now, they are thinking differently through the blockchain and decentralized systems, but it's not a given that whatever evolves and it is still quite the Wild West and where this all comes out won't just continue to um, reinforce existing funding structures and where the funding ultimately goes. And so I think as a community that cares about how do we fund true regenerative sustainable projects, we need to get in early and we need to think about how we leverage the Web3 ecosystem, the blockchain and the refi and DeFi and different financing mechanisms to truly fund the kind of world that is sustainable and that is fair and we don't want to live in. Okay, that that sounds like a fair point. Talking about the liquidity, which is in Web3, you just said that there's a lot of liquidity in Web3, but there's a lot of activism happening in Web3 too. You know, there's the Ukraine DAO and there's the Unicorn DAO and all of these projects wherein cryptos are funding activist projects. Like, do you see, is it because there's, uh, you know, that people have the ease of, you know, uh, sending funds across the world or what what might be the factors which are actually fueling cryptos to be used in activism lately? Well, I, I don't think, I think activism is something that happens across any kind of ecosystem and, and format. And I think blockchain is just enabling it to happen in a different way and enabling and again until the correction in the last few weeks there was so much capital inside of the web3 um, ecosystems that it was an easy way for people who wanted to support ukraine who had made a lot of money in the web3 ecosystems to um allow them to transfer money in a way that they were supporting a cause. But I think that support for Ukraine happened in many different ways. It happened through traditional means, through traditional funding sources, and yes, it happened through Web3 and, um, and blockchain. And I think that was just a, another method to get the, the, the funding to you know, a very important issue. Yes, that's, that's surely true. in the time uh, when talking, that much liquidity in um, in a system, if you make it easy for people to give money to an important cause, they will give that money. Which is part of the yeah. thinking around Regen Dow is that we make a lot of excuses as to why we can't move to a truly sustainable future, why the indentured systems are too difficult to re-engineer why the money isn't going to where it should be going. And we can continue making these excuses or we can find and re-engineer systems that allow the money to flow to the projects that matter. And blockchain is presenting a unique opportunity to allow us to think a little differently. And so Regen Dow is really a proof of concept to say, let's try to figure out how to think differently about how we fund these sort of projects. That's a, that's a very interesting point, Lara. Uh, could you tell us, do you have any more projects upcoming in India apart from Dhun? Uh, are you looking forward to uh, Yes, yeah, so we have two region pods that are collaborations between um, ecosystems, artists, and how do we regenerate these pieces of land using a combination of tech, science, and old regenerative practices. And then we have a carbon capture project 
that is very much um, a partner who has an existing company that does a lot of trucking inside of India. And that we, we are purchasing land in India and being given land in India. And then these, um, the corporations who are working with my partner will then offset their carbon footprint by purchasing um, our carbon credits. We're also looking on, we're, we're, we're looking to create um, different kinds of credits that aren't just a carbon asset class, but potentially a new asset class as another project. And then we also, um, there's also um, a person in the ecosystem that's working on raising money from a series of big traditional banks and then um, buy the debt of a island nation with the understanding that the funding will also go to helping regenerate the island nation as an example of ways that we could possibly um, incentivize regeneration slightly differently. So there's a lot of experimentation going on inside of the DAO and it's just the beginning. And that's really what the DAO stands for is how do we think differently about funding a truly regenerative planet. That sounds lovely, Lara. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for taking out your time. I hope we get to talk again and we get to talk about the progress of all the region Dao has done and we speak in better times. Thank you so much, Lara. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.